It's a wonderful day today and we're going to read some concerning Reddit stories and I hope you're excited. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you subscribe if you want to. And let's get into it. Enjoy, guys. Am I the a for telling my mum not to kiss my newborn while she had cold sores? My wife and I are in our 30s and we have a 3 month old baby. Recently my parents came to visit and my wife noticed that my mother had a cold sore outside of her mouth. My mum gets a lot of these cold sores outside of her mouth during the year. My wife told me to remind her not to kiss the baby right now. I approached my mother who was carrying our baby. I asked if she'd cut her lip and she responded that it was a cold sore. In which I responded, Ah uh, okay can you not kiss the baby right now please mum? It's not good for them. My mum immediately handed me the baby and got visited visibly upset. She said, oh, okay then. Well, here's your baby. My father also got very mad at me to the point where they wanted to pick up everything and leave. They were here visiting and we were about to start grilling food. They ended up staying, but it was incredibly awkward. They called me picky, inconsiderate and rude. My wife had told me about how serious cold sores and kissing babies can be. Could I have been nicer about the whole situation? I guess I could have pulled up an article, but both of my parents are very dismissive. They could have still called me crazy and told me that I was overreacting. Yeah, they definitely could have OP. And by the sounds of it, that's what would have happened. But no, you're not the a-hole OP, like this comment says. Not the a-hole. Your child's health is more important than your mum's feelings. Yeah, and it's a little bit odd to get upset about that, isn't it? Like, it's not that big of a deal. And also, the dad was upset as well, OP said. Why? Like, they must have took it the wrong way, surely. Why did they get so upset about that? It didn't really seem like that needed to be an issue. Yeah, this one too, not the a-hole. I can't see why protecting your newborn could be wrong, and you weren't too rude or inconsiderate either. Yeah, what's the problem? And for them to call OP picky, inconsiderate, and rude, that's a rude and inconsiderate. What are you talking about? No, you're not the a-hole, OP. Is it entitlement or something? That's so confusing. Yeah, this one too, not the a-hole. It's your responsibility as a parent to ensure your child's safety and well-being. Your mother should have understood and respected your request, even if she was initially upset, unless there's more that OP left out, but I don't really feel like that's the case. But yeah, that's a pretty big reaction to what you said, OP. And if legitimately that's all that happened, yeah, you're definitely not the a-hole. Post number two's called, am I the a-hole for wanting to skip my brother's wedding? So I, 30 male, and my older brother, Sam, 33 male, have always been close. We are the eldest in the family, so it does make sense. About three years ago, Sam told me that he was dating this girl in another country. I was happy for him, and I hoped to meet her soon. Well, I did, and it didn't go well. It was over at dinner, and my folks were happy and respectful, and so was I. During this, I got to understand that they met while she was married to her ex-husband. They had an affair close to three years and finally decided they couldn't hide their love and be together. They played it off like it was some romantic sh I felt disgusted mainly because I've been in the ex-husband shows. You think you have a good relationship and it turns out your girlfriend was having an affair. I felt disgusted by them both, mainly my brother since the man always preaches about being a stand-up guy. I did not stay long after dinner ended. I didn't want to make a big deal so I just started distancing myself from Sam. Well, they're getting married soon and Sam asked me to be the best man and I told him no and I said I didn't feel comfortable celebrating a union between two disgusting people. Damn, good on you for saying that OP. He got pissed and said that I was being overly sensitive. I told him he could think whatever he wants, but he's still a disgusting man that played the side toy for years. We had a fight and said some nice things to each other before he left. My dad later called me furious and said that I was ruining their celebration. I asked how. I simply didn't want to attend. If they wanted to cut me off because of it, they could and I'd understand. He passed the phone to my mum who did try and talk to me, but after explaining why I didn't want to go, she understood and she told me she loved me. Then I hung up. I've been getting messages still from my dad and my two younger sisters about it, but I don't think I'm wrong. Am I the a-hole? P.S. Sorry for the terrible grammar. You're so not the a-hole, OP. And you've got such a backbone, OP. That's so awesome. It's so refreshing to read somebody actually standing up for their morals. Yeah, this comment, not the a-hole. You've got principles as a man, and he simply does not. You don't have to co-sign their bullshit relationship. I'm guessing that your brother won't understand how it feels until it's done to him. Right now, he feels like he won. Meanwhile, it only took being her side for three years for that to happen. There's nothing romantic about being cheaters and destroying a marriage, and they did it for three years. The fact they proudly shared that at your parents' dinner table shows the kind of people they both are. If you don't want to go or participate in the f***ery, you have every right not to. Respect to you for moving like a real man, not some scumbag. Yeah, a hundred percent. The top comment says, not the a-hole, you should ask him. If she cheated on her ex-husband, how long will it take her to cheat on you? If she had no problem cheating once, she'll have no problem cheating again. 
again. And OP said, I'm sure he knows. I'll just wait until it bites him in the ass. Yeah, and it will, OP. No, you're not the a-hole. Good on you for not going along with it, OP. And good on you for seeing it how it is and not pretending that it's cute or something. Wow, this comment is so good. Not the a-hole. Why would you attend the marriage of two people who've shown that they don't respect marriage? Yeah, such a good comment. This comment says, your brother's a hypocrite. Stand up, guys. Don't have three-year affairs with married women. You aren't wrong. This comment says, there's a good reason why your dad was furious, but your mum understood. Not the a-hole. Yeah, this one too. Time to check your dad's phone to find out why he takes your opinion about cheating so personally. Definitely a red flag. Like, why are you so angry about this? But no, you're not the a-hole, OP. You're doing the right thing. They can't just expect you to be happy about it. And you even said yourself, hey, if you don't want me at the wedding, that's completely fine. It sounds like you'll happily like stay out of the way and not cause any issues. You're just not going to support them. And that's completely understandable. You shouldn't support them. Yeah, no, you're definitely not the a-hole OP. And good job too for what you said to your brother. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for not helping my parents since I'm not legally required to do so? My parents saved money for myself and my siblings to go to college. My two older siblings used the money, went to the local college and have started families. They had to work at part-time jobs to pay for social activities and such. I'm the youngest and I got a full ride scholarship to a great school. I asked my parents if I could use the money for other stuff than education related expenses. They sat me down and explained that the money was only for my education and since I didn't need it, they weren't legally obligated to give it to me. They said it wouldn't be fair since my brother and sister had to work during school if I got money for goofing around. I tried to explain that I'd studied much harder than they had and that my education wasn't costing them a cent, not even room and board. They used the money to take the family, including me, or so they thought, to Disney World and renovate their home. I told them I wouldn't be joining them on the vacation. I left home when I graduated from high school. My uncle got me a job as a welder's helper for the summer. I gave up my summer, but I made enough that I wouldn't have to work during the school year. All the guys I was working with thought that I was nuts to give up pipeline money to go to university. The welder I was working with actually gave me $2,000 as a gift at the end of the summer. He said he gave me the job as a favor for my uncle and that he thought I'd quit in a few days. He was impressed that I'd worked my ass off for the whole summer. And I did this for the next two summers as well. I had a great time in school with my friends and professors and then in the summers with a bunch of hardcore blue collar guys that were earning more than most people. I didn't cut my family off or go no contact or anything. I just didn't have a lot of free time. When I was in school, I was busy keeping my marks up and in summer I was working. I really only saw my parents at Christmas time. And one year I went to my girlfriend's parents' house for Christmas. I got a co-op job the summer before my fourth year. It led to a job offer contingent on me graduating. I did. I then went to work in some really cool places. I've been from the high Arctic to Africa, Australia and South America. I don't have a wife or kids. My current lifestyle isn't really conducive to a great relationship. I work and travel. And I've been at it for 10 years now. I'm making more than the pipeline welders for a much cleaner job that utilizes my brain. I still miss the camaraderie of hanging out with the boys, but those three summers gave me a great grounding in how guys in the field think. And that has helped my career. The last time I talked to my parents, they asked if I could help them out since they want to retire early and they know that I'm doing good. I also want to retire early, so I don't really want to give away my nest egg. I asked them how much my brother and sister were giving them. They said they had families and they couldn't really afford to help. I said that it wouldn't be fair for me to give them money since neither of my siblings were and that since I wasn't legally obligated to do so, I wouldn't be. They're upset with me for being stingy and holding a grudge. I don't think I am. I didn't ask them for a penny after I left home. I didn't ask them to pay for my travel when I came home at Christmas. Nothing. I've been paying for my own life since I was 18. I need to add that they aren't working at backbreaking jobs. They're teachers. My brother's a teacher and my sister's a social worker. I'm an engineer. Yeah, the top comment, not the a-ho. You've already gifted them your education fund. They chose to squander it instead of saving it for their retirement. Yeah, that's such a good point. You didn't take any money. The one under that says, not the gay hole. They taught you that financial help is discretionary. Tell them that it wouldn't be fair for you to pay for them to goof around while other people have to work and then take yourself off to Disney World. Yeah, do that, OP. This comment says, not the gay hole. Your parents established the rules. No help unless there's a legal obligation. They can't change their mind now that the shoe's on the other foot. Also, teachers get the summer off. Tell them your uncle can get them jobs on the pipeline if they need money. And OP said, I mean, I would help them if they needed money for an emergency or something. Just not because they didn't save enough. This one says, no, not the a-hole. Your parents committed the cardinal sin of treating their kids unequally. Yeah, no, I don't feel like you're in the wrong OP. Like you said, if they really needed help, you definitely helped them out. But yeah, why should you be the one to fund their retirement now? That's a bit rough. Also, I like this comment too. They can't change the rules when it isn't to their advantage. Not the a-hole. And the one under that too, not the a-hole. You were basically punished for getting a scholarship? Yeah, no, not the a-hole, OP. This one's called, am I the a-hole for convincing my sister to change her baby's name. This is my first time posting on Reddit after a long time lurking. On mobile, so sorry for any typo. 
knows, my sister, 19 female, announced to the family that she and her boyfriend were pregnant a few months ago. She immediately followed it up with the names that she'd chosen. Tyler, if it was a boy, after the father, or Savory, if it was a girl, pronounced Savory. Apparently she liked the name Avery, but she wanted to make it unique, hence the extra letter. Yeah, if you're talking about names, sometimes trying to make it unique is not the answer. <laughs> Obviously this is a terrible name for a baby, and I politely asked if they were considering any other names. She said no, that they were already decided. <laughs> my sister and I aren't really close, so I decided to let it be and I congratulated her. A while later, my sister announced that they were definitely having a girl and that little Savory was healthy so far. At this point, I decided to become more involved with my sister, since this was going to be my first niece or nephew, but I couldn't stop thinking about the poor kid getting teased about her name. My sister has untreated BPD and any direct challenge to her decisions always escalates to a huge blowout, so I had to play my cards carefully. I got her a specific baby name book from my mum, the very same book that her mum had gotten both of our names from. She loved this gift and we spent all night eating snacks and going through it. That night I opened up about my concerns for the name that she'd chosen and the bullying that might come from it, which she was receptive to because we'd both been bullied in school. Over the next few weeks I said things like, oh this would be a cute name, or I saw the coolest list of names on Pinterest. My sister did love some of the names and finally, after all of that, she announced that she'd settled on the name Margot instead, taken from the baby name book. I was overjoyed from having saved my niece from a life of being named the way somebody would describe a steak. Shortly afterwards I got a text from my sister's boyfriend, who I didn't really know at all because he was never home when I was there, calling me all sorts of terrible things for getting involved in his family. I asked what he was talking about and he continued to cuss me out because he chose the name Savory and I had no right to change it. <laughs> I pointed out I was only interested in the well-being of my niece and that my sister was my family so I had a right to an opinion. This man had the nerve to tell me that I was an idiot, that I didn't know anything about family since I was still single despite being older than both of them. I pointed out that clearly I wasn't the dumbest one in the conversation since I didn't try to name my daughter after a literal piece of meat and now my sister's angry at me for getting involved in calling her boyfriend stupid even though he said much more hurtful things in the text to me. Am I the a-hole? No! <laughs> oh my god. The audacity of the boyfriend. Yeah, this comment, not the a-hole. Savory. Nope. Obviously this is a terrible name for a baby. That's right. There's a comment that says not the a-hole. The bullying potential is off the charts. Slavery should do the project. Savory? I don't know, you seem more salty to me. And of course the inevitable creepy ones. Oh baby, but you're so sweet for me. The boyfriend's an idiot. Yeah, but called OP an idiot. This one says, OP, you're not the a-hole, but please show your sister the comments on this thread. Do not let her dumbass boyfriend convince her to change the name back. Also, Marco is an adorable name. And OP said, I'm actually going to show her this thread. I've been running damage control all morning and my sister still wants to run with Marco, unless she's changed her mind in the last hour. Yeah, the fact that the boyfriend is coming after you, OP, that's so wild. And if you're naming your child, it's not as simple as being like, oh, I like this name, so I'm going to add another letter at the start. Like, what are you doing? Oh yeah, we like the name Avery. Let's put an S at the beginning. Done. No, don't do that. Yeah, no, that is terrible. And you're not the a-hole, OP. Okay, the next one is an entitled people post. Buffet hoarders and thieves. I'm currently on vacation at a fancy hotel and I witnessed two disturbing incidents this morning that left me questioning people's sense of entitlement and respect for others. At breakfast, I noticed a family, a couple, a kid and grandmother at a nearby table. What caught my attention was how they had essentially recreated the entire buffet at their table. After they were done loading up their plates, many items at the buffet were completely empty. Their table was piled high with plates full of untouched food, ham, cheese and croissants. When they left the restaurant, most of the food remained uneaten and would obviously be thrown away. The waste was overwhelming. Wait, so instead of taking what they were going to eat, they brought over a whole bunch of food that they weren't going to eat? And now it's going to have to get thrown out? Later, I went to get a drink from the beverage station. This area has a fancy machine with built-in jars for various juices and water. The machine automatically refills these jars when they're returned. Normally people fill their glasses directly from the machine and immediately put the jar back. A woman approached the machine, took out the entire water jar and walked away. At first I thought she was taking it to her table to fill up multiple glasses, but after a while I realized the jar was still missing. I looked around and I saw that she'd left the restaurant entirely, presumably taking the jar back to her room. <laughs> what? How do these people even exist? When I informed a staff member, she seemed confused, repeating she she went out of the restaurant with the jar. I really before quickly heading to the kitchen. I'm wondering how people can be so disrespectful to the entire community. It would never cross my mind
mind to behave like this. I can't even imagine considering such actions as possibilities. Have any of you witnessed similar entitled behavior in hotels or other public spaces? How did you react? Yeah, that's right, OP. The fact that they even feel like that's an option is so unbelievable. Especially the one where they were taking all the food off the buffet. Food that they weren't even going to eat. They were just sort of making a smaller buffet at their own table. And then they didn't even eat all the food, so it gets wasted. Yeah, that's infuriating. And that's enough for today. I hope you guys had a wonderful time today. I've got a super cute wholesome meme to show you before we go. Grandmas deserve to live forever. How cute is that? <laughs> In the Buzz Lightyear outfits. I don't even know why. I thought this was so beautiful. Shout out to you, Grandma. And on that beautiful note, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you had a wonderful time today. And if you did, make sure you let me know down below in the comment section. And also like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today, da 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 da, goes to the Smurf. If you ever feel like it, I'd love to see Minecraft parrots in the background. They're my favorite Minecraft animal. Guess what, the Smurf? I also love Minecraft parrots and they're in the background of today's episode. And I'll definitely make sure they're in more episodes in the future. And thank you for the suggestion. If you have any other Minecraft animals you want to see in the background, let me know down below. And thank you for the support and I'll see you in the next episode, everybody. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!